Okay, now, um, we have the dictionary, we have the posting file. The question we are trying to answer now is how to compress both the dictionary and the posting file in order to reduce, uh, um, uh, first of all, to reduce the size of the occupancy. But we will see also that uh, this is uh, um, an advantage also in terms of uh, speed and performance. Um, so clearly, first of all, compression allows us to save uh, space, uh, and uh, usually saving space means that uh, you do not need uh, uh, huge, uh, uh, I mean, big uh, uh, machines with a lot of uh, hardware, and thus you save money. Um, if you can keep more stuff in memory, clearly you can increase the speed, as we saw before. It's uh, our main argument. Uh, and uh, what is interesting is also that uh, um, if you read compressed data and decompress it in memory, it's uh, faster than read uncompressed data. So it makes sense to compress the data into the disk and then bring it into, into the memory, decompress it, because it's faster than read and compress the data. Okay. Clearly here the main uh, goal is to have the compression algorithms that are pretty uh, fast. And uh, this is actually true for the, the ones that we will, uh, we will see. Okay. Um, so we will first focus on the compression technique, uh, for techniques for the uh, dictionary. Uh, and here, clearly, the main idea is that uh, as smaller is the dictionary, as much we can keep it into the main memory with all the advantages uh, that we, we saw before. And then we will see how to reduce also the size by compression of the posting file. Um, if we have a smaller uh, data, possibly we can reduce the time to access the disk, right? Because we can bring into the memory more data. Hmm? Okay, good. So first of all, we can distinguish between lossy compression and uh, lossless compression. The lossy compression is something where we, we lose some of the information. Hmm? Now, <laughs> if you consider uh, some of the pre-processing uh, steps that we discussed uh, in the lectures, uh, those are actually some kind of uh, lossy compression techniques. As an example, if we, when we, we remove the stop words, uh, we saw that the semantics more or less is the same, so it works anyway, the information retrieval task, but clearly the information is not as the original ones. We are removing some information. Okay. Uh, then we will see lossless compression that allow us to um, keep all the information uh, that we have originally. And this is, uh, as an example, the compression techniques that we will see discussing the index compression ones. Okay. In order to better understand how to de design a compression algorithm for the terms in the dictionary, we need to understand the term uh, uh, statistics. So keep in mind that basically we have uh, this uh, picture um, in which we have 800,000 documents uh, and uh, we have about uh, uh, 400,000 uh, terms. The word types are basically the terms, okay? Uh, now, what is interesting is that uh, this picture allows us to, even if we focus simply on the first column, okay, so we consider only the terms, we see that uh, depending on the technique that we use, so the unfiltered terms are about uh, 500,000, if we remove the numbers, we reduce by 2% with respect to unfiltered one. 
If we do case folding, what is case folding is basically we, instead of having a capital a small letters, we have all small letters. You see, we have a further 17% of improvement, and cumulative is 19 because it's 17 plus 2, and so on and so forth. If we consider the first uh, 30 stop words, we reduce again by 19%. Okay. And we are, if we apply uh, stemming, we have 17%. Okay, so this is the, the first, I would say, compression technique, lossy compression technique, is the application of the techniques we saw uh, before in order to um, uh, normalize our data. Why are lossy techniques? Because even if we do not preserve the original context anyway, all the techniques we apply allow us to perform well, in terms of information retrieval task. Okay. Okay, now we want to characterize the, uh, basically, the, the, the size of the vocabulary uh, in relation of the number of tokens in the collection. Okay? So the question we want to answer is, to what extent, looking at the number of tokens in the collection, T, we can get an estimation of, <coughs> of the number of terms, okay? of the size of the vocabulary. Okay. What is interesting is that actually there is a linear uh, uh, relationship, so a linear model that well defines the um, this connection between uh, the number of terms and the number of tokens. And actually, if you put b equal to 0 0.5, uh, you get a pretty good uh, 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 fitting that works. It's an empirical law, clearly. But uh, as an example, if you consider uh, the Re Reuters uh, data set, you see that actually the fitting uh, is uh, relatively good. Uh, notice that we are in logarithmic, in logarithmic scale. Okay? Don't forget what we are doing. Those are the terms. Okay, and this is the size of the vocabulary. Okay? Good. So, actually, the, this uh, empirical law is pretty good. Uh, in particular, if you consider the first uh, million uh, token, uh, the Ips law uh, is absolutely consistent with, uh, in terms of prediction, with the real number, because the actual number is uh, 30,365, and the predicted one is 30,323, so it's, it's perfectly OK. Hmm? And uh, in general, what we, what, what we can observe is that these uh, this uh, law works pretty well, even if it is empirical. Okay. So now that uh, we have a characterization of the size of the vocabulary according to the uh, uh, to the size of the uh, to the terms in the collection, uh, we want to dip inside, to dig inside the structure of this vocabulary in order to better understand uh, whether uh, there is a distribution of terms uh, that is uh, peculiar. In general, you can observe that in the natural language there are uh, few frequent terms and many, many, many rare terms. Uh, that, that's why even with the limited number of uh, words, actually, you can express yourself in any language, in, 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 any, in most of the languages. Because the f frequent terms are very, uh, um, actually, uh, uh, are uh, very few. Um, we will see that actually this is interesting also when we'll, we will move on uh, <coughs> in our assumption. Up to now, we are discussing a model in which all the answer to a given query are the same, right? In the Boolean model, we do not distinguish among the different documents provided as output to a given query. We will see, maybe next time, so on Wednesday, 
on Thursday, sorry, uh, that actually we can rank the documents provided as output to a query in order to figure out what are the most relevant documents for a given query. And in this ranking, uh, the frequency of a term with respect to a given collection plays uh, an important role. And the intuition is pretty clear. If a term is very rare, it likely will characterize very well a given document. If a, document, if a term is very frequent, uh, most likely it will not uh, characterize very well a given document. Okay? Th th that's the main idea. So we will uh, get back to this observation when we will discuss the FIDF as a tool uh, in order to rank uh, the documents uh, 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 provided as output to a given query. What is interesting is that there is a, this uh, zip flow which is actually the zip, uh, the load that has been exploited uh, to, to design uh, the zip uh, compressing algorithm. This is not the case. We are talking about compression techniques. So, uh, it's quite uh, natural. And the idea is that the i-th most frequent term has a frequency CFI, which is proportional to 1 over i. OK? So it's inverse proportional to, to the frequency to his ranking. Okay. Notice that um, <coughs> CFI is the number of uh, occurrences of a given term, TI, in the collection. Hmm? How would you exploit? Uh, why, why is this uh, interesting to design um, a compression algorithm. What is the intuition here? Think about this sentence. Now you have a quantitative way to use this sentence. You have a, an estimation. But why is this interesting in order to, des to design a compression algorithm? What is the idea? Why the zip, the very well-known zip algorithm works? So up to now, hmm? what is it there? Up, up to now, all the documents, all the terms are encoded in the same way, right? All the documents are encoded in, to, in, in the same way. Now, w what would you do to reduce the occupancy in space? What, what, what do I mean? I mean that, as an example, up to now, since we know that the longer uh, English uh, uh, word that we will see in our collection is, I don't know, 20 bytes. Actually, this is the number. So I will use uh, 20 bytes in order to, uh, to represent each of the bytes, if each of the terms in my collection. The fact is that uh, this very long sentence, according to this observation, is very rare. So basically, I'm using 20 bytes for all the terms, just because this is an upper bound of the occupancy of space, even if this term is extremely rare. So what, what can I do? What kind of intuition can I exploit? Instead of a fixed length, I can exploit Right, I mean, <laughs> instead of a fixed one, a variable one. And what is the idea behind the variable one? If a term is very frequent, I will use a shorter encoding. Why? Because it appears a number of times. If a term is very rare, I can use a larger, a longer encoding, maybe even uh, longer than the actual uh, need uh, for uh, writing down the 20 byte uh, of the sentence, maybe. But since it's uh, extremely rare, uh, the average effect of this uh, variable encoding is that uh, I will reduce the occupancy. OK? Good. So keep in mind, in natural language, there are few very frequent terms and very many very uh, rare uh, terms. And then uh, you have this uh, zip law. 
Okay, so just uh, a bit more about the Ziplow. Uh, we say that uh, the most frequent term has a frequency which is proportional of uh, 1 over i. Uh, and so if we consider the second uh, most frequent term is 1 half the frequency of the first one and so on and so forth. Okay, so at the end uh, we have that uh, CFI is CI to the power of K. Okay, which is an example of the power low. This is the zip uh, low for uh, the Reuters uh, document uh, collection. Well, as you see, maybe it does not fit uh, perfectly well, consider that this is logarithmic. Huh? So this is a significant gap. Okay, It doesn't fit very well, but anyway, this is the takeaway. This is the message that you have to uh, bring away with you in order to design your solution. Few frequent terms, many rare terms. Okay. Good. Now, let's see how we can uh, actually implement some dictionary compression. Okay. First observation, the dictionary is uh, relatively small if we compare it to the passing file. Uh, but uh, why is it important? Because we want to keep it in memory. In all our arguments, as much of the dictionary is in memory, as fast is the algorithm. It can, be, it can possibly point to a file in the secondary memory, but if we can keep it in memory, this is very important. Okay, so compressing the dictionary is very important. The situation up to now is something like this. We have a term. The term is any term in the English language, and we say that uh, roughly this term occupies, in the worst case, 20 bytes. So the longest uh, uh, term uh, in the English uh, language that we will consider is about 20 bytes. Then we have uh, four bytes for the frequency, and this four bound is bounded to the router's uh, collection. And then we have uh, four bytes uh, to the pointer, to the pointing list, posting list, sorry. Okay? So this is the situation that uh, we start with, and roughly is, since we have 400,000 documents, uh, 400,000, uh, sorry, uh, terms, okay, we have 400,000 terms, remind that this is the, the, um, the picture, and word types are terms, we have 400,000 terms, If we do not consider variable uh, sides uh, terms, uh, we consider 20 plus 4 plus 4. We have a total of about 11 megabytes. OK, come on. 11 megabytes nowadays are uh, pretty small. But uh, let's move toward the other uh, um, corpus, uh, other collection of documents, and uh, this argument still holds. Okay, so even if 11 megabyte is small now, the arguments are absolutely okay. Okay, so we consider 20 bytes because they can handle those uh, uh, pretty rare, actually, words like uh, hydro, chloro, fluoro, carbons, or uh, supercalifragilis, uh, Yes, please. Uh, I don't know, actually. I know the Italian translation, but <laughs> I don't know the English one. Anyway, those are extremely rare. Uh, they are used uh, maybe very in very specific sentences. And we handle, we, we, we use those 20 bytes uh, also for uh, terms of length one. Okay? So th 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 that, that's the main problem. But Okay, if we want to have a kind of baseline for our uh, arguments, uh, we have to consider that the average length of a term in English is anyway 8, which is far distant from 20. So the question is, to what extent we can have a dictionary in which terms in average 
have a length of 8. Okay? Or, or, or how we can use this, uh, this uh, information? Okay. The first nice concept is that to now we consider the dictionary as a, a, a table of uh, distinct terms. But we can consider a dictionary also as a string. Okay? And this is the intuition behind the first compression technique. <coughs> so basically, if we consider the dictionary as a string, what we can do is we can uh, still maintain the frequency and the posting uh, as 4 bytes and 4 bytes as uh, in our uh, original example. But now, this is actually a list of pointers uh, to the different terms uh, into the string. Okay, so they are the position into the string. Oops, sorry. Okay. And so roughly, in, in the case of the Reuters, we need three bytes, we will see later on. Basically, you are concatenating uh, all the terms, uh, and you are putting uh, just uh, pointers. So instead of uh, 4, 4, 20, here you are 4, 4, 3 for each entry. Okay. So let's see what happens. You have again uh, the four bytes for the frequency and for the pointer to the pointing list uh, are still there, no problem. But uh, since, um, um, okay, uh, sorry, you have eight bytes uh, on average for term in a string. This is the average length of a term. Um, and so you need uh, roughly a pointer that allows you, those are the number of terms. The average length is eight. So basically, you need uh, to point uh, to something that is logarithmic in these sides. So that is less than 24. And that's why you have the three, OK, the, uh, the eight bits. OK, so you have the space that is 400, the number of terms, frequency. Posting list, pointers, and then the number to store the data. Okay, which is uh, seven dot six uh, megabyte instead of uh, eleven, which is a significant uh, reduction in space. Okay. Okay. Good. Can we do better? We can do a little better, considering uh, a block, again, uh, instead of a huge, a long uh, uh, string, we divide uh, this string in blocks of k terms. Okay, in this example, k is equal to 4. Each block of the list is made of 4 terms. Now, we have a pointer to the beginning of this block, and then clearly each term in the block must start with the length of the term, because I have no other way to find out a given term. Okay? So in this example, this is the block to the term, which is made of four uh, terms, and the first one is made of seven, cis uh, till, the second one cis tile, sorry, the second one is nine, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, let's see what happens. If we have a block of size four, uh, <coughs> uh, where we use the 4 multiplied by 3 bytes for the terms pointer. Hmm? Uh, we now use, what is this 4 multiplied by 3? This is the previous one. Okay? Is this one the one without the block? Okay? 
Now instead we are using a block. So now we use uh, three bytes because again uh, these three bytes are the ones necessary to point uh, to the beginning of a block. In the previous ca case was to point to the beginning of uh, if a, a term. Okay. <coughs> And now we have four bytes uh, that are basically the length one, two, three, four at the beginning of each term. Why a byte? Because it's more than sufficient. At, uh, in the worst case, we have 20, right? Okay. Good. So instead of uh, 4 multiplied by 3, that is to have, we have that text number minus the saving, which is 3 and 4. OK. And so we have 5 bytes per block. So if we have 5 bytes uh, per block, uh, now the number of blocks, so we are not considering anymore the terms, is uh, 400,000 divided by 4, which is the size of each block. And this is uh, the number of bytes per, for each block. And so we have 0 0.5 megabytes. And so we reduce again from 7.6 to 7.1 megabytes. OK. But calculation is extremely simple. Please keep in mind the idea. Here, the first idea is considering the dictionary as a string. Anyway, I have to index any, every single term. In order to, uh, to index every single term, I need the pointer. And this is the first solution. The pointer is three bytes. Okay. The second solution says, instead of considering a single block, a single uh, string with pointers to all the terms, consider blocks of terms, k terms, k can be whatever, k, and do the exact uh, same trick. But now you are saving. Why? Because you do not need a pointer for each of the term, but you need only a pointer for the beginning of a block. And then according to this, you are saving a, a pretty good amount of space. K. What is the lookup? The first observation is the following. By increasing the block size, k, so, hmm, we can get better compression. But at the same time, uh, there is a trade-off between compression and lookup time. Why? Because <coughs> in this case, which is actually looking uh, into the uh, binary tree, what is the lookup time in average? OK. I will find job immediately. I will find Dan and Pete spending one. I will find the win, ox, X, and box spending two. One, two, three, four. And then I will find Ide spending three. So the average is the sum up of all this stuff divided by eight. One dot six steps. Okay. What is the average if we consider blocking? Okay, again, we have a block of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now what is the average? Okay, I will find the job immediately. Aiden docks with one, box and pit with two, and so on and so forth. And so we spend two instead of 1.6. So clearly, compression reduces the size, but increases the lookup time. Uh, you can move the tuning uh, uh, according to your need. You can move the trade-off according to your needs. OK? OK, good. We, we didn't yet uh, also exploiting another observation that usually 
<coughs> consecutive entries in an alphabetically stored list uh, share common prefix. Okay. So we can possibly do something like this, that is depicted in this picture, okay, uh, in which uh, in a single block, uh, which is of size uh, k again 4, you have automata, automati, automatic, automa automation. And again, automat is shared by all the, those sentences. Okay, this is uh, what happened in, in a block of with k equal to 4, in which at the beginning you have the length. Clearly, you can do better simply using the same uh, uh, root and then uh, <coughs> making only evident the differences. Okay. Now, this is named front coding. The fact that you use this root, the front, in order to improve the performance of the coding. Now, summing up, <coughs> if you consider a dictionary with fixed width, what is the, this fixed width? The famous 20 bytes for the term, you have 11 megabytes. If you Consider dictionary with 10 pointers into string. So the idea is the dictionary is a string. And I have a pointer to each single term. I have 7.6. Why? Because I remember I reminded that instead of 20 now I have roughly 3. If you consider blocking, I can uh, reduce according to the calculation we saw before. And if you do front coding, you can you, you can reduce even more, uh, reaching 5.9. Okay. So similar argument. Uh, are still valid uh, even if instead of considering the Reuters collection, you consider a bigger one which does not fit into the memory. Okay? The dictionary of 11 megabytes again will fit in nowadays computer quite easily, but uh, it's extremely simple to find out a collection that does not fit. Good. So now we have seen uh, how to perform uh, <coughs> the compression of uh, terms. Uh, what we need to do is how to perform the compression of posting list, okay? The other element. Questions? Okay. Now, the, the posting list, uh, as you can expect, is much larger. It can be about 10 times the size of the dictionary. Um, and what we want is to store all the posting uh, um, compactly. Now, for the purpose of this uh, lecture, uh, a posting is a doc ID. Uh, we have about 800,000 documents. Uh, and uh, clearly, uh, we would use uh, 32 bits uh, to uh, to encode uh, this, uh, this uh, number of documents. Uh, or if instead of considering uh, the mapping into integer, we can consider the number of bits. And we will see that we can encode both with uh, a variable width and considering the single bit. Our bound is 20 bits. Okay, the goal is to use, uh, if possible, less than 20 bits. What is the key idea again? It's uh, similar to the ones uh, we saw before to some extent. Is instead of uh, writing down uh, the doc ID, we write down the gaps between the doc ID. I remind you that uh, a posting list uh, is a list of integers. Those integers are the doc ID. So, the solution we explored up to now is a list of integers. While we can consider gaps, so as an example, if you consider the posting link computer, the first entry are those one. And now, if you consider the gap is five, which is a pretty small number. Okay, so in principle, we can save a lot. Instead of writing down uh, 28, 31, 54, we can simply write 5. Mm -hmm. And similarly, we have 43 for the second uh, <coughs> uh, 
uh, doc ID in the posting list of computers. So basically, if instead of considering doc ID, we consider the gap, we will have the first doc ID, and then the gap is five, and then the gap with respect to this is 43, which is pretty small, and is definitely smaller than the 20 bits uh, with, uh, we, we considered before. Okay. Okay, this is another possible example. The doc ID on the top, you see I have a gap only one, of only one, with D, computer. Okay, why D has a gap of only one? Because D, if has not been removed by the stop word, uh, is uh, so common that it's possibly in all the dog ones. So that, that's why it's uh, reasonable to, assu to assume that uh, D has a gap uh, between the documents that is simply one. While computer, you cannot uh, assume that computer is everywhere, but it's pretty, say, um, <coughs> it's relatively pretty common. And uh, arachnocentric is definitely not common. So indeed, the, the gap between the only two documents that contain um, arachnocentric uh, is pretty big. Okay, is actually comparable to the uh, to the document. Okay, what we want to do, and this is the idea we discussed before with the variable length encoding, the idea behind the zip loop. Okay, we want to. Uh, we will use uh, about 20 bits for the uh, rare terms, but for the very frequent terms, uh, we will use only a very limited uh, number of bits. Those are terms extremely popular, and thus uh, the overall uh, saving uh, with the variable length and encoding uh, would be significant. Okay. So we will explore two techniques uh, for doing this. One is the variable byte code, which is interesting because, uh, because it's actually used by a number of uh, research and commercial systems. Okay? So it's clear what we are doing now. We want to save space of what? We want to save space of the posting list. Good. We say the posting list, uh, uh, instead of considering the posting list made of doc ID, if we consider posting list made of gaps between the post ID, this can be beneficial. Because gaps are definitely smaller in size with respect to the doc ID. And so that's the idea we want to explore. Okay. And the idea is that since they are smaller, we will have basically gaps of different sizes. We want to encode those different sizes so that the most frequent gaps are encoded with a relatively small number. The most, the most rare terms, which are possibly bigger, can be encoded with almost the number of bytes that are necessary in order to encode the uh, given uh, the, the, the terms, namely 20 bytes, 20 bits. Sorry. Okay. Good. Uh, it's a very simple technique, uh, this variable uh, length encoding, and it works as follows. The most significant bit, the i bit, uh, is named the continuation bit. And it is either 1 or 0, clearly. It is 0 if the number does not fit in the remaining 7 bits. It is 1 if it does. That's it. Okay, that, that, that's the only, the only rule. Let's see the example that makes it, it clear. So, 824, does it fit in the 7 bit? No, it doesn't, because at most with the 7 bit we have 256 okay, values, 255. Okay, so zero. Is it sufficient to store 824, 7 and 7, 14 bits? Definitely it is. So 1. 
And if you put together these two, this is actually the binary encoding of 254. Uh, 224, sorry. 224. Okay? Other example. Five. Five uh, definitely fits in seven bits. Huh? So it's one. And this is the five encoding. Uh, 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 214,577. It doesn't fit in one, it doesn't fit in two, it, it does fit in three uh, uh, concatenation of seven bits, namely in 21 bits. And as I need, zero, zero, one, and the concatenation of those three is actually the number. Okay? Good. So I don't want to go into the details of the encoding and decoding. Uh, I hope this is pretty clear now. But even both encoding, uh, coding and encoding are relatively simple. OK. And uh, clearly, you can take advantage from this, right? Because you, uh, it, it, it basically uh, respect, uh, the, uh, respect is, conf is consistent with the idea of a variable encoding in which very rare terms are encoded with a big, uh, say, uh, uh, number. What are very rare terms here? Why are very rare? Very rare means huge gap. Okay, this is the translation. Very rare means huge gap. Okay. You can even be very lucky and basically in two consecutive documents, uh, both of them uh, have the very rare uh, document, but usually this is not the case. So very rare means big gap. Assuming that uh, those rare terms are distributed uh, randomly among the documents. Okay. And thus, while uh, very frequent means small gaps, and as you can see, small gaps are encoded uh, in very few bytes than big ones. Okay, this is the key concept through which we can take advantage of this technique. Okay, again, I don't want to go into the details of the algorithm, but should be pretty clear what the algorithm does. Okay. Clearly, <coughs> now we consider a byte made of 8 bits, but you can use uh, uh, different alignments, uh, 32 bits, uh, uh, like words, 16 bits, uh, even nibble, uh, nibble, I mean half a byte, 4 bits. Uh, so, the byte alignment allows you to get the best performance of the compression algorithm, depending clearly on the distribution of the terms in your documents. Good, but anyway, this concept of byte alignment implies that we are not considering a single bit encoding, which is actually the goal of the next techniques, eh? which allow us to implement bit level encoding with the so-called gamma encoding. So to do this, we need the first this concept of uh, uh, unary code. OK, is, is it clear the difference between variable bit encoding and uh, gamma coding? In one case, I have this concept of alignment. Everything is with respect to bytes, words, nibble, whatever you have you want, but you have to define uh, the basic unity for alignment. In this particular case, the basic unit is bit, a single bit. OK, what is unary code? Uh, basically, you will represent n, a number n, as uh, a sequence of n ones with a final zero. So three is three ones and the final zero. 40 is 40 ones and the final zero. 70 is 70 ones and the final zero. 
Okay? This is the idea of unary. Good, what is gamma code? Gamma code allows you to represent a gap, again, don't forget that we, the, the basic idea is still the same. Instead of representing the posting list as a sequence of postings, we represent the posting list as a sequence of gaps. Okay, but instead of encoding those gaps with uh, uh, variable encoding as we saw before, which takes into consideration the unit, either bytes, nibble, words, whatever it is, now we are considering single bit for encoding. Okay, and we consider length and offset. <coughs> the offset is the gap in binary with the leading bit chopped off. So if, for example, the gap is 13, this is the binary representation of 13, I will remove the leading bit. Okay? This is the length. It's uh, uh, the, the, the definition, okay? Uh, the offset, sorry. The length is the length of the offset, but expressed in unary code, okay? So, uh, the length now is three, expressed in, in uh, unary code is one, 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 zero. Okay, let's see this table that should allow you to get a better understanding. Okay, zero, no problem. Number one is one, zero. No problem again. Now, number two is one, <coughs> one, zero in unary code. The length is one, zero, the offset is zero, and thus, this is the gamma code made of length and offset. Okay? Okay. Don't forget that uh, 2 is 1, 0. You have to chop off the leading bit so the 1 is removed. The 0 remains as offset. So this is the offset. Okay. And the length uh, of the offset is one, and in unary code is this, one, zero. Okay, that's the idea. So, <coughs> three. Uh, expressed in unary code is one, 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 zero, but uh, three in binary is one, one. Okay, I remove the leading bit, so one remains. Okay, the length is one as before, because this is the length. And this is, this, is, this is the representation of three. And so on and so forth. Is it clear? It's the definition, okay? Good. Now, what are the boundaries for, for this gamma code? The length of the offset and the length of the, of the length is bounded by if G is the gap, is log to, log to G, right? The, by definition. I mean, uh, it's, it's the definition of length and offset. Okay, plus one bit, why? Because we have to add the zero to the length at the end. We have a number of one, which is log to g, plus one bit, which is the zero, the zero and at the end. But anyway, this is not important. It's log to g. Okay, so in total, we have that uh, the length of the entire encoding is twice log g. Clearly, gamma encoding have always odd length because it's twice something plus one. But okay, that, that's only a properties. Okay, why, why is this interesting? Because in the best case, we can uh, actually encode the gap G with log G bits, right? In the best case, if we are not encoding, but we, are, we, we would free, be free to use the minimum number of 
of uh, bits. And uh, so we can say that uh, land encoding is uh, twice the optimum, which is a pretty good encoding. Okay. Now, okay, there are a number of uh, <coughs> properties. Uh, uh, okay, the, the bound is twice, but actually you are uh, within a factor three of the optimum. It's prefix free in the sense that a valid code word is not the prefix of any other. Uh, uh, what is interesting really is that uh, the result is not dependent on the distribution of the gaps. Okay, which is not the case in the previous case when we considered the variable uh, length encoding. Uh, so we can use it for any distribution. It is uh, universal. And it's uh, parametric free. It does not depend on any parameter. It works uh, as it is. Okay. Now the problem with the gamma code is that anyway, machine works with alignment. You can even have uh, alignment with 8 bits, 16 bits, uh, th 32 bits anyway. Machines are not actually uh, free to use uh, code at bit level. Or you have to tweak it in order to make it working. But you have uh, atomic uh, elements that are either 8, 16, or 32 bit. Okay, So it, it's difficult uh, to use encoding at bit level simply because you have to implement some logic in order to work at bit level, encapsulating the fact that you have alignment. So in many cases, uh, variable byte encoding uh, is uh, extremely efficient, and, that's, uh, uh, and this is why it's, uh, um, uh, it is used, also because uh, it's extremely simple to be implemented. Okay? So in practical commercial and research system, in many cases, variable alignment uh, works pretty well. Okay. Okay, those are the numbers, just to give you a rough idea. If uh, you consider uncompressed posting with 32 bits words, you have uh, this uh, size in megabyte. If you have 20 bits, you have this size. If you have variable byte encoding, you go to half the size, and you can reduce significantly again if you uh, use uh, posting uh, encoded. Okay? This is to sum up. Questions? No questions? Good. So now we know how to handle uh, the index construction uh, not only in uh, RAM but also in secondary memory, not only in secondary memory but also in distributed system, not only all the posting list when it's static but also when it's dynamic. And we know also how to improve the index uh, by compression techniques that basically handle both the compression of the terms of the dictionary and the compression of the posting list. Okay? So on Thursday we will go forward and we will explore other techniques uh, not only dealing with Boolean queries but with some uh, more, uh, 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 some different techniques that are more, uh, say, user-friendly for common users. Okay? See you on Thursday.